Some video game locations just look eerily real, whether it's the level of detail, the actual design of the place, or just photorealistic graphics. There's a lot out there. So today we're talking about 10 video game locations you gotta see to believe. Places that feel like real locations, but unfortunately aren't. Let's get started off with number 10, Alan Wake 2 and the town of Bright Falls. Now on console, uh, the visuals can look a little flat and blurry, but on a fully decked out PC running on some higher settings, there are parts of Alan Wake 2 that can look shockingly real, even without any trickery or photo mode manipulation. You know, most of the time, if there's anything that's going to give away that the place you're in isn't real, it's usually the character models and the NPCs. Even in the best looking games, these guys usually stand out as fake, but the characters in Alan Wake 2 are a cut above. They look fantastic and eerily realistic, way more often than not. Uh, many of the locations in this game are designed like levels and aren't strictly going for naturalism, but to me, the closest area that looks like reality is the main town, Bright Falls, especially when you first arrive there at the start of the game. It's a small area overall, only covering like a central block of the town and some little side streets, but the amount of detail packed into every little environment is stunning. And the lighting effects are some of the most impressive and natural we've seen in a game. The investigation is being taken over by the federal agents. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Remedy has always been masters of pushing technology forward, but they've really outdone themselves with Alan Wake too. There are a few points in this game where it's honestly kind of hard to tell if you're looking at something real or not. Now over at number nine, uh, ready or not, The Apartments. This is a pretty impressive looking game normally, but there's nothing here that's going to fool anyone into thinking that it's actually real. But add on a few mods, especially this one that adds a reshade to make the whole game look like body cam footage, and suddenly the whole experience becomes a lot closer to reality, almost weirdly so. Now to us, the level that looks the most quote unquote real with all these mods layered on top is one called 23 megabytes a second. The one where you're hunting a guy in this dusty California apartment building. It's mundane as hell, which makes the whole thing feel so much more real than your average level. I'll save you. You got him. Safe. Sure, the hacker den itself is pretty heightened. You know, you're never going to mistake this part of the map for a real place, but when you're walking between apartments or just climbing the stairs, there are parts that legitimately look like real life at time with all these mods. It's an impressive achievement for a game that's still basically like an indie game. Next at number eight, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Calm. Uh, the follow-up to Final Fantasy VII Remake retains the impressive character models of the first game, but what it adds to the formula is some absolutely stunning environmental design. Compared to the more mundane locations we've highlighted so far, the locations in Rebirth are packed with detail and visual variety. Honestly, most of the places look almost too nice. Still, in places like the first village you go to, Calm, there's this almost amusement park level of environmental design. Like, it's not a place you'd see in real life, but it's a place you wished existed and you could believe it. This town is just incredibly detailed from top to bottom. Everything is immaculately designed and detailed. Clearly, this place was built by a team of meticulous and talented artists, and it really shows when you stop to take it all in. Uh, when you're walking around normally, nothing here is going to fool anyone into thinking it's the real deal. I mean, the character models look great, but they're not fooling anyone into thinking that they're actually real people. So the best way to make this place look almost real is to switch to photo mode. Exploring the more secluded nooks and crannies of the town really reveal some spots that could fool someone into thinking they're real. The lighting and detail for everything is just so impressive that from far away, your brain might actually make some of this look like a real place. It's fantastical, but it all looks so good that it still somehow manages to look practically real. Next over at number seven, Sons of the Forest, uh, the actual forest itself. Uh, with the recent release of the game's 1.0 update, now is the time to look back at its greatest achievement for us, the, the forest itself. Sons of the Forest is one of those games that can look shockingly real in one instance, then obviously fake and video gamey in another. But if there's uh, one thing that the game pulls off just about perfectly, it is that forest. It 
It's just so dense and cluttered, and the effect of pushing through the tall grass and bush actually looks pretty good, rather than in most games where you just kind of clip through this stuff. Trees are covered in moss, the lighting is spot on. It all looks very impressive when you're just walking through it. You have to ignore the glowing rocks and sticks on the ground. You know, those pretty much give away things automatically, but other than that, these outdoor locations are some of the best out there, and they've actually gotten an update with the full release. Another part of this game that just looks great, the waves on any beach. These are like some astounding effects. Just watch out for rain because that doesn't look so good. Yeah, the rain ain't fooling anyone, guys. Next over at number six, Robocop Rogue City's Detroit. This is another one of those games that looks decent a lot of the times on console, but on a powerful PC, it's a whole other ball game. Uh, with all the ray tracing effects enabled and all the graphic sliders cranked up to max, this is a game that can look downright uncanny at times. Certain things can give it away, you know, like if you look at pretty much any NPC up close, but these environments look incredible, especially the game's sort of open world hub in downtown Detroit. Make no mistake, this area is a dump, but the detail on pretty much everything is jaw-dropping, especially in parts where they really get to flex with ray tracing, like this street with the police lights going. The, the cars and the road in particular really stand out too. The cars are amazingly realistic and the streets themselves look like they came right out of a gritty, dark 80s action movie. This is clearly the area where the devs went all out to show off and it worked. Nothing else in the game manages to look quite as good as this place. You know, maybe like the more crumbling parts of Detroit later on. The police station is also really cool, but this area the game introduces you to at the start, it is so impressive. The ground shaking. Judgment day is here. Next over at number five, we have Dead Island 2 and the Serling Hotel. We've talked about how surprisingly good Dead Island 2 looks in the past, uh, with focus going to places like Venice Beach, but another area that's a real standout in terms of graphical fidelity is the Serling Hotel on Ocean Avenue. Uh, this is the hotel crossed with a mall that you get to about halfway through the game, and while this place isn't in the best state, you know, the blood and the zombies might clue someone into thinking it's not real, it still does look really, really good. One of the most impressive things this game manages to do is make most of the places you visit on your LA adventure seem real. The lighting and high definition textures do a lot of the heavy lifting, but the overall environment design helps a lot too. Like everything in the hotel is so carefully and specifically designed to look like a real place, and it exceeds more often than not. This is the kind of detail that's only possible in a game where the maps are generally small. You know, Ocean Avenue only covers a little more than a city block after all, but it's just an outrageously gorgeous looking location from top to bottom. And because part of it is actually zombie free, it's one of the few places Places in the game that might just legitimately fool people into thinking that it's the real deal. At least, you know, if, if you take a really good screenshot. Next over at number four, uh, even after all these years, Red Dead 2 still sets a high bar for impressive visuals in an open world game. And running on a powerful PC, this game is still stunning to look at. And it's a crime that Rockstar hasn't ported it or even given it an upgrade patch for modern consoles because this is a game that would definitely benefit from it. Uh, we've talked at length about places like Saint Denis and how dense and detailed that city is, but the thing that Red Dead 2 is ultimately the best at is probably nature. This game has some of the most naturalistic and realistic environments in video games. And while there are so many spots that could fool people into thinking that they're real or hell, you know, into thinking that they're looking at a painting rather than a video game, uh, but our favorite is Big Valley specifically the area around Hawk's Eye Creek, it's north of Strawberry. Uh, this is maybe the most verdant, naturally beautiful locations in the entire game. I mean, like the purple plants, the snow-capped mountains in the distance, and the impressively rendered river makes this whole area one of the most photogenic in a game full of competition. The effort Rockstar put into making these natural areas look real is just unbelievable. They even accurately recreated the oxbow bends on these sort of 
flatland rivers, that's so distinct. It's all the more impressive that they aren't just copying a specific location. They've built all this up from scratch, and it still somehow looks real as hell, even all these years after the game released. Next over at number three, let's talk Forza Horizon 5 Arco de Cabo. You know, the developers, Playground Games, they use pretty much every high-tech trick in the book to create Forza Horizon 5. From laser scanning to photogrammetry, they took every advantage they could to create a game with some of the most realistic environments possible, and it does show. You know, when you're driving in first person and turn off all the HUD effects, this game can be incredibly immersive, but the nature of the game means that there's not many places that straight up look real, like 100% real. There is one spot that stood out to us though, and that's the Arco de Cabo. Uh, this naturally occurring land arch that the developers recreated pretty much one-to-one -one in the game. Seriously, just look at any actual photograph of this place and compare it to the game. It's uncanny just how similar it really looks. Just ignore this mess of polygons on one side, that gives the whole thing away, but like if you look at it from certain angles, then this location looks utterly convincing. You could, you could easily fool someone into thinking that this is real with the right screenshot. Now over at number two, Cyberpunk 2077. This is like one of those games that looks visually stunning, even if it's now a few years old. But the thing about Cyberpunk is, well, it's set in a futuristic dystopia. So most of the time you're looking at stuff that's intentionally unreal. You know, it's not realistic. You know, most of the city isn't gonna fool anyone that it looks real, it just looks good. So to find a spot that actually feels real, you've gotta find a place without any big high-tech skyscrapers or holographic displays. You gotta go out into the badlands or the slums on the outskirts of the city. Some of these places look pretty impressive, especially under certain lighting conditions. But to us, the most real place in the game, at least in terms of a place that might fool someone into thinking is real, is the massive garbage dump out in the badlands. This place is just a sea of trash that stretches out out to the horizon. When you look at it at certain angles, it looks just like a real photo of a dump. You might think I'm just joking around here, but seriously, look up a picture of a dump and then compare. They're shockingly close. Now finally, at number one, for this last entry on this list, we wanted to highlight two things that push realism in games to the next level. First is this visual demo called Secluded Orchid from the developers of the Bright Memory games. This thing looks absolutely mind-blowing, and for good reason. It was created by taking more than 5,000 8K photos and using them to create high-quality Unreal Engine assets. There's no actual total game to play, and there may never be, but this demo shows off just how powerful Unreal Engine 5 can be and the possibilities in the future. Now, the other thing we wanted to talk about here is something way more well-known. We've talked about it before, Unrecord, this game in progress. It's that body camera first person shooter game. This thing is still up in the air like when it's actually coming out. The team is seemingly very small working on it, but it's still an impressive exercise in trying to create a photorealistic effect in a video game. And even if it's only just a trailer, it still looks practically real at times. You know, just look at it from far away, but it can be eerie. Technology is just about there to create truly real looking environments. And while mainstream gaming hasn't quite gotten to the point that some of these demos have, it's only a matter of time until they do. So we may have cheated a little bit with this last point, but it just, it's really cool to talk about. Anyway, those are 10 game locations you won't believe are not real, or at least some people won't. There are plenty more to talk about though, and we'd love to make this an ongoing series. So if you guys got any other examples, any specific spots in locations in games that will trick people trick your eye a little bit, let us know in the comments. If you like this video and you like talking games with us every day, clicking the like button is all you got to do to help us out. We very much appreciate that. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.